All right, we now have a picture from Apollo 11, so let's go to Houston for the conversation between the uh, spacecraft and Houston, and we'll see these pictures. There's the Earth. The Earth from 130,000 nautical, or about 149,000 statute miles. Uh, do you think Earth, as uh, we see it, uh, at our left-hand window, just a little more than a half Earth, uh, we're looking at uh, the eastern Pacific Ocean, and the north half of the top half of the screen, uh, we can see uh, North America, Alaska, United States, Canada, Mexico, and Central America. South America becomes invisible just off beyond the Terminator or inside the shadow. We can see uh, the oceans with uh, a definite blue cast. See white bands of major cloud formations across the Earth. And can see coastlines that got uh, the western U.S., San Joaquin Valley, the Sierra Mountain Range, the peninsula of Baja California, and can see some cloud formations over uh, southeastern U.S. There's one uh, definite uh, mild storm southwest of Alaska, looks like about uh, 500 to 1,000 miles, and another uh, very minor storm showing uh, the south end of the screen near the, uh, oh, a long way south of the equator, probably uh, 45 degrees or more south latitude. We were saying, uh, Cliff Charlesworth, that uh, we can still see the Earth uh, through the left window, and it appears that uh, we can see a floodlight uh, off to the left, either that or some sun shafting through the hatch window. Almost looks like two Earths. That's <laughs> floodlight. Ah, uh, now we're coming in. Uh, can't quite make out who that had. Uh, it's big Mike Collins there. Well, you got a little bit of... Yeah, hello there, sports fans. You got a little bit of me, plus Neil's in the center couch, and Buzz is doing the camera work this time. Uh, Roger, uh, it's a uh, little dark uh, now, Levin. Uh, maybe a, a bigger F-stop might help. Yeah, that didn't work. <laughs> It's getting a lot better now, Levin. Uh, Mike, you coming in uh, five by. I got a good. Well, I put on a coat and tie, but I know about this ahead of time. Is uh, Buzz holding your cue cards for you over? <laughs> cue cards have a no. Uh, Roger, we can see portions of the LAB now, the 
system's test meter panel uh, in the lower part of the picture, or we did have it anyway. Okay, and then directly behind his head are our optical instruments, the sextant and the telescope that we use to take uh, sightings with. Uh, Roger, copy, and we see the disk key flashing with a 651. In fact, we can read registers one and two quite clearly. That's the computer. Yeah, the old high gain uh, angle telling us which way the Earth is. Uh, copy. That's a beautiful picture. Clarity is outstanding. We can also give you the time of day and. Uh, in our system of mission elapsed time, elapsed time, 34 hours, 16 minutes, and umpteen seconds. Roger. Can you see that uh, clearly enough, Charlie? Uh, Roger, Apollo 11. We can see it counting up every t uh, every second. Uh, we got 34, 17, uh, zero 02 now. Okay, back to the high gain angles. Uh, Roger. Swing amp. Now we've amputated those. It's the best quality picture we've ever seen from the inside of a spacecraft. Yeah, you can read those numbers like that, like a tote board of the racetrack. Even if it is their uh, computer display keyboard or disk key readout. 11 uh, Houston, uh, it's, uh, we have a beautiful rainbow there, and as you move the camera around, uh, actually, uh, that looks like the star chart coming into view now, over. Yeah, those are both of the two star charts that he uh, is using right now as sunshades over the uh, right-hand window, window number five. Uh, Roger, we see the sun shining in through it behind him and uh, plotting out the uh, uh, equatorial, uh, correction, the ecliptic plane, and uh, the stars that you're using for the navigation. You're right. He doesn't really need the chart. He's got to memorize it just for show. <laughs> we got people. Well, we're uh, pointing up in this direction. We see out our side windows the sun going by, and, of course, out one of our windows right now, we've got the Earth. Now, right behind my window, we have the sun, because the sun is illuminating the uh, star chart that we see. This line represents the ecliptic plane, and uh, these lines, vertical lines, represent our uh, reference system that uh, the spacecraft is using at this time. As we approach the moon, uh, the moon will gradually grow larger and larger in size, and eventually it will be in uh, eclipse. It will be eclipsing the uh, as we go behind it, as we approach the uh, lunar orbit insertion maneuver. Uh, Roger, 11. Uh, we've, uh, could you attempt a little bit better fo focus there, uh, 11, over? Looks like Mike Collins is moving the camera around the inside of the spacecraft again, back to Buzz Aldrin's star charts. And then, uh, now, Aldrin's the only one we haven't seen. He was talking just a moment ago, but we haven't seen him yet. So part of uh, the smooth paint of his uh, sunny ball time. 11 Houston, uh, that's uh, a lot better on the star chart now. We can uh, make out the ecliptic plane and the, uh, the planets and the, <coughs> the sun and the moon as, it, uh, as they're drawn at various places uh, throughout the ecliptic plane, over. Okay, Charlie. There's over. Slightly out of focus shot, a little audio breakup beginning uh if we can uh, get some of the wires untangled here, we'll uh, give you a demonstration of how easy push-ups are up here. Evan Roger. Ah, get the view of buzz there. And one of 
one of the reasons these pictures are such good quality is they're using a small floodlight inside the cabin to help illuminate their faces and the instruments. It's pretty hard doing it that way. Why we just roll over and do it the other way? All ah, right, we copy. Couldn't figure out whether that was a chin up or a push up. Just take your choice, I guess. <laughs> 